My friends, nobody disputes that poison has been injected into the Middle East. The only question is, who is the serpent? And I've heard Catherine and Mishana tell me repeatedly that Hamas may be bad people. As if you can classify those who shoot gay men in the head as just bad people. As if you can classify those who aid and abet honor killings of Muslim women for doing nothing but falling in love just bad people. As if you could excuse for shame those who took 21 innocent Palestinians on the last day of the war in Gaza, not Israelis, not Jews, and before the eyes of the world shot them in the head because they dared protest against Hamas. As if you can simply call them bad people. As if you could take an organization that would take Jews who live here in Great Britain, students at Oxford who happen to carry the name Jew, and write a charter calling for the extermination and annihilation of every last one just bad people. My God, my God, if a Jew do, did that, I would call it an abomination. If a Jew did that, I would be sickened and I would never defend it. And I would call it what it is. I would call it evil, incarnate. But it's not Hamas's fault, you see. You see, Hamas is the serpent that was created by Israel. They've only turned to violence because of the occupation. They've turned to violence because of the military checkpoints and the human degradation. But I was on the panel with a man named the Dalai Lama. And you know what? He has been under military occupation by a country called China since, let's see, 1950. Even if you believe that the Palestinians are under military occupation in that they honored, you'd have to say they honored the Oslo 1 and Oslo 2 Accords where Israel gave Yasser Arafat control of 97% of the Palestinian population, which it remains till this day. And still it turned out that Israel had lost 1,000 citizens, equivalent to 60,000 Americans, in one year, blown to smithereens. Maybe Israel has a right to be a little bit weary of these peace deals. But even if you say that Israel is completely occupying the Palestinians, why didn't the Dalai Lama start blowing people up? Why is he a voice for peace? You have no choice. Once you're degraded, you've lost all moral choice. You have to become a murderer. God Almighty, was anyone more terrorized than the people of your incredible country in the years 1940 to 1941 in the Battle of Britain? Was anyone more terrorized than the citizens of London who faced Hitler's Luftwaffe bombs on a nightly basis. Did Britain send suicide bombers into nurseries? And by the way, Israel never even contemplated getting anywhere near how the Allies responded in Japanese and German cities. You speak about Israel precision bombs, what do you want Israel to be? God? Technology is advanced, but it's not that advanced. Where is the Air Force base underneath this chamber? Where are the rocket launchers? Does Britain build its nuclear silos in the middle of St. John's? What is Hamas doing having military command posts under hospitals? Who does that to children? Who makes kids into bulletproof vests? And by the way, who asks children to stay there even after the imperialist Jews inform them that a bomb is coming? Who tells them that if you leave, you will be shot? Who does television broadcasts that announces to the Palestinian children that they have an obligation to give their, quote, head and shoulders to the Palestinian cause, that they must martyr themselves. Again, if any Jew said that to a Jewish child, let alone a Palestinian child created equally in the image of God, I would call it an abomination. The fact is, Catherine, I'm not warmed up just yet, but I will be. My friends, the fact is that Islam is a great world religion. 
And I'm not concerned about Hamas and Israel. You're correct, Catherine. Israel's a strong country. We learned after the Second World War we had no choice. We learned after seeing some of the reactions in the room tonight that we couldn't rely on other people to protect us. And God bless the IDF. But I will tell you, you know who I'm really worried about, to be honest? I'm really worried about my Muslim brothers and sisters. I'm worried about their peace. Israel is strong. It will be strong. It'll continue to be strong. It has no choice. But I ask you, who is going to protect Muslim women, should Israel decide, should all the Jews in the Middle East decide, you know, this is just too tough a neighborhood. Miami Beach, where I grew up, much more beautiful. We're just going to leave and finally go to America or come to England. If Israel were to leave the Middle East and cease to exist, I ask you a question. Who is going to protect Islamic women from honor killings, which only don't happen in Israel? Who is going to protect Palestinian homosexuals who are accused of being collaborators and are murdered, and you don't hear almost any objection. Who's going to protect Arab and Muslim women who want to get educated? We just had a Nobel Prize winner who got shot in the head. You see, I agree with you. You're part of a great world religion. God bless you for standing up for it. I'm a religious man. I respect that. Don't let anyone contaminate your religion, even if they're part of that same religion. And, and when you ask me, Catherine, where was Israel for the past 60 years? What were they doing? You know what, Catherine? They were simply trying to survive. It wasn't easy. You see, in 1947, the UN voted, excuse me, just give me, give me a minute here. In 1947, excuse me, thank you very much. 1947, the UN, and this week is the anniversary. Catherine, we will continue this over drinks. In 1947, <laughs> the UN voted for two states. The Jews accepted it. Catherine, you'll have to tell me over drinks why the Arabs did not. The 1936 Peel Commission. The Jews accepted a division of the land. The Arabs did not. 1967. Israel conquered all this land after an annihilatory war launched on them, especially from Jordan, who wasn't even part of the war. And Moshe Dayan says four days later, we want to give it all back. West Bank, Gaza. Gaza's given back already. You know how the Arabs responded? They met in Khartoum in Sudan a month later. Everyone knows the story. Three no's. No negotiations. No peace. No recognition. Israel withdrew from Gaza completely in 2005. But Hamas is not interested in peace. Hamas is interested in, in contaminating a great world religion by being more interested in seeing the spilling of blood. And that's what sickens me about the ISIS beheadings. You know what sickens me? It's the glee with which they murder. And, and, and even if Hamas were to get up and say, you know what, we, we, we value Jewish life. We do, we value Jewish life. But we're, we just are upset that we're being treated. I could even somehow make sense of this. Muslims are created in God's image as are Jews. We must condemn any organization that targets civilians for murder. There are no excuses. Morality is now, it's universal, it's for all time. Thank you very much. <laughs>